My name is Ernest O'Reilly. I'm the Community Development Manager here at First Service Credit Union. I have the pleasure of bringing this type of financial education information to you. Uh, normally, we would be at your place of business providing this information live, uh, but due to what's going on, we want to keep you safe. We want to stay safe ourselves. So we are bringing the information to you virtually. But don't worry, it will be just as good as if we were there live. Last time we got together, we chatted about how you can get a great deal at the dealership when purchasing your auto. Tied into that conversation is what we're going to be discussing today, and that's how to build your credit. Okay, and here at First Service Credit Union, we have a wealth of experts. So today I'm so elated to be joined by one of my one of my mentors here. Uh, she's a mentor to many of the individuals here. Anne Coleman, our branch, uh, our branch manager at the Tunnels branch will be joining in this conversation. She brings to the table 30 years of experience in the financial industry. So you all are going to get a lot, a lot of great information. So Miss Anne, welcome. Thank you so much, Ernest, and thank you to all the participants today. I'm so happy to be with you today, to visit with you today, and to bring you some information on this much needed seminar. We need to know as much as we possibly can about FICA scores because they affect us in our day-to-day -day lives. So again, you're going to get to know a lot about me because I have a lot of good, good information, a lot of life experiences, both good and bad over the last 30 years, but it's gonna be a learning experience from you. You'll take away something that will be lasting with regards to FICA scores. So again, to all participants, thank you so much. Wonderful. So we will be talking about uh, various topics. What is a credit score? Why does, why is, does my credit score matter? Why does my, what, what does my credit score mean? Common credit score myths, and how do I gain control of my credit score? So we're just going to jump right into it, Ms. Ane. Let's, let's tell the good folks watching, uh, what is a credit score? A credit score is a three-digit number that helps the lender to determine risk. The lender can determine or have indicators from this three-digit score as to how much they will be comfortable lending you, what sort of interest rates you will receive, and what sort of risk they're taking on. What is the likelihood of your paying the, the payment or the note back? And again, this assessment is based on your entire credit report. So again, it's a three-digit number that determines risk. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to start off today with this pie chart. And when you look at the pie chart, you'll see two large areas. We're going to first focus on those large areas. This is so very, very important. 35% of the information that contributes to your FICA score is based on payment history. Now, I don't want you to be fearful of that because this is by and large the easiest easiest area to accomplish the most points. And we're going to talk about payment history throughout our session today. But just remember, the early bird always gets the worm. My personal experience has always been to make sure if your payment is due on the 15th of the month, there are two things that you want to do. You want to make sure that you pay early in the month and you want to make sure you set up automatic payments. So just imagine your credit will be impeccable with regards to this area. If you have a payment that's due on the 15th of the month, but you have your automatic transfer to post on the very first. Another thing that you accomplish, which is so very important, and we at the credit union want to always help our members with this. We don't want you to pay fees. We don't want you to pay any late fees particularly. So just imagine if it's due on the 15th and it's late after the 5th, if you go beyond that time, you're going to pay a late fee, which we don't want to see that happen. So again, just keep in mind, this is 35%, a large area of the pie chart. Make sure you set up automatic payments and you pay before the due date. The next area is credit utilization. Mm. And you'll see again that that's 30% of your FICA score wow. is derived from this area. One thing that you wanna make sure of, when you have a credit card, revolving credit I'm speaking of right now, this 30% portion of the pie, always keep that 30% in mind because you don't want that credit card balance to exceed 30% of the credit line. That 30% is a very, very important number. 
keep that in mind because it's so very, very important. If you have a $1,000 credit line, you don't want your balance to exceed $300. You don't want your utilization to exceed $300. But from an overall picture, take a picture of your entire credit portfolio with regards to revolving credit because lenders look at the, this percentage is calculated in totality. If you have 10 accounts and you have 10 credit cards, you don't want the credit limit on any of, of, of the totality of them to exceed 30%. So and, that's credit utilization. And also we do have a chat going on live as well and our chats are being moderated also. So if you have any questions anytime during this presentation, please put your questions in the chat and we're gonna compile all the questions and uh, answer them at the end, okay? Sorry to cut you off, Ms. Sonny, go ahead. Okay, fine. So our next area uh, is a smaller percentage of the pie is 15%. But always remember, it takes 100 pennies to make a dollar. So you want to focus on this area just as intently as you would on the first two areas we discussed. Length of time you have had credit accounts. It's so very, very important to lenders to determine two things, not just your ability to pay. That's the, your ability to pay is really important, but your willingness to pay. You could make $10,000 a month and be late on a $25 a month payment. That's not a good thing. So the length of time that you have had credits helps the lender to be able to look back and see your willingness to pay. It demonstrates how you've paid others, which is really important. So always remember the very first credit card, the very first account that you had, make sure you pay that well and you keep those accounts open i always use the example that when i went to college the first credit card i got was a sears credit card that credit card i did not really need because i didn't have a sufficient income but i used it so it was a nightmare in the beginning but that credit card i kept it for as for many many years decades actually and it has always been um, a, a way to keep my credit scores up because it's so very old and I did um, maintain payments on it in a timely fashion. So another small portion of the pie, but yet very important would be inquiries or new inquiries. 10% is re with regards to new inquiries. You don't want to have your credit report pulled unnecessarily. Throughout the course of our session today, we're going to talk about soft pulls, hard pulls, how the importance of, of looking at your credit. But the inquiries that are made on your credit report, just remember a hard pull or, or inquiry on your credit report will remain in your credit report in your credit history for 24 months. Mm -hmm. If there's a negative impact, that negative impact stays there for another 18 months, another 12 months months and then it eventually falls off. So again, inquiries are, are, are very, very important. And then the lender looks at those inquiries to look at how you are applying for credit. So is it a good thing for you at some point to apply for 10 different credit cards account? Maybe not because that is an abundance of inquiries in a short period of time and it can have a negative impact. Um, be mindful of those inquiries for one last reason. You want to watch them on a monthly basis to see who's inquiring on your credit to, um, to, to, for, to avoid fraud, because sometimes you'll have individuals that are inquiring that don't have your, that don't have your permission, and it could be an indication that fraud is taking place. Right. So on to the next one. All right. Your credit mix. Your credit mix. Another thing that we will talk about going forward, it will be two types of credit. And you want to get used to these, uh, these words and this verbiage. You can have installment credit. An example of that would be your auto loan or closed-in loan. A closed-in loan is a loan that has a specific repayment period and specific payments. We want you to set up a second checking account that addresses just those fixed payments and pay them early in the month. One thing that the, your creditor will look at with installment loans and with revolving loans is that you have a mix of it, that you're paying it on a timely basis. The installment, the revolving loan, they want to make sure that you're not excessively using it excessively and exceeding that 30% with the installment loans. How much did you borrow and how much have you paid down and if you're paying it in a timely fashion? So you want to keep a mixture of those. Okay. That's always important. So wonderful. So we've given you all, you all a good idea of 
of what your credit score is. Now we're going to get into why does my score matter? Why does it matter? Ms. Honey? There are a number of reasons why your credit scores matter. One of the most important reasons is a, a monetary reason, and that's because of interest rates. Those interest rates are one of the primary factors with regard to what we call pricing, the interest rate to, that you receive. So when you're out there shopping for a vehicle and you find the vehicle that you've always wanted at a perfect, perfect price, that perfect price means nothing if you don't have the perfect interest rate. So again, you wanna make sure that your FICA score is at a wonderful level so that when you can save money over the long term because at different periods of time in our lives you're going to find yourself borrowing tens of thousands of dollars for homes and automobiles it's important that when you purchase those big ticket items that you have the best and the lowest rates that you can possibly get we want to offer you 3.99 or your new vehicle we don't want to offer you a 17 percent interest rate okay. those two interest rates are there's an enormous difference in the dollars and cents over the life of the loan and over your monthly payment as well oh, yeah. so moving on negatively impacts your ability to rent an apartment if you have bad credit and you have a landlord that's looking at that credit report, I always say that a credit report in that instance is like a report card. Mm. They are looking at how you have paid your creditors in the past, and they are using that information to determine how you're going to pay them. Mm. They, and and from, from a realistic standpoint, your character comes into play the fact of how organized you are coming to play and your ability to pay bills in a timely fashion. The landlord doesn't want to have to charge you a late interest rate. They want their rent on time each month because he in turn, the ball rolls down here. He in turn has rent and bills that he has to pay as well. So if the landlord sees that you don't current pay the bills that you have currently on time, that may result in not you not being able to lease their properties. And it certainly will result and if you are able to lease, you're going to probably have higher costs mm. in the end. And your employer, really? This is so very, very important mm. because, again, it all comes down to a monetary impact on you as an individual. You find the job of your dreams, just picture that. You've set in on that initial face-to-face -face interview and you've you put your best foot forward and you feel like everything is going just as it should, but then you receive the information that you haven't received a job and it's in large part because of your credit, your credit rating. Mm -hmm. That employer has done the very same thing that the landlord has done. They've made an assessment based on how you handle your personal finances. Personal finances are very, very important to each and every individual. And if it's, a, if it's important to you, something that's important to you, as important as this, this job would ultimately be, the mindset is that you're going to pay those bills on time and you're going to focus on what needs to be done to keep your credit in order. So again, it's a strong, strong indicator for potential employees, especially in most industries where it's uh, finances or any money that's uh, involved in our industry is very, very, very important. All right. So we're wrapping up and getting into another section now. Uh, what does my score mean? Ms. Ane, what does the score mean? Now, we're going to go through this area rather quickly, Ernest, because it's, it's pretty much self-explanatory. And what I have learned is most of our members are pretty savvy. Mm -hmm. When they come into our location, they're going to say one of two things. If I ask, do you know about what your credit score is so that we can kind of give you an uh, in some indication of the rate? Most will say, yes, this is what my credit score um, is. It's in that range. Most will say, oh, no, I don't know. I don't even want to look at it. The latter, we want to overcome that. Right. Your credit risk, anything 
that's important as your credit score, you want to make sure that you look at it as often as possible because what you don't know is what will hurt you. Once you know that there's a problem, if one exists, then you will know how to address this. So quickly, let's look at these numbers, Ernest, and then we'll, uh, we'll do a quick analogy afterward. Okay. 300 to 579 is considered very poor. Okay. A score of 580 to 669 is considered fair. Okay. A score of 670 to 739 is considered good. Okay. And a score of 740 to 799 is considered very good. Okay. The ultimate is 800 to 850. That is an excellent score, an excellent score. But this is so important that we drive it home, Ernest. I want to just do a really quick analogy. If you were to enter, if you were to approach a gated community, and you're about to key in that three-digit code to enter that gated community, but you don't have the correct code, that 350 won't work, the 450 won't work, mm. 500 has no impact as well. Mm. So then you start saying, you know what? I just don't have the right code. Mm. But before you've spoken about, before you were able to try the 650, the security comes out. Mm. He has a, a, a board in his hand and he needs some information from you. He's gonna wanna know what is your name, your driver's license, your license plate number, and finally, who are you here to visit? Mm. You have to speak that person's name and that person has to come on the phone and to help you. You need someone to call you and give you a code that will help you get in. So you've needed help. In our world, we call that a co-signer or a co-maker on the loan. So then you gather your thought pattern, you listen to the training that Ernest and I are presenting today, and you purchase a home in that gated community, now you have the correct three-digit code. Mm. You, have, you, you drive up to the gate, you put in your 750, and all of a sudden the birds are, are <laughs> chirping, and you have gained access because you have the right three-digit code. You, so you can enter that property, that gated community, that FICA estates all on your own. And by the time you get to 850, well, then it's just face recognition. You, 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 you hit, you've hit the apex. You did y'all hear that? that? So, so that, that good uh, 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 and, and, and now, excellent <laughs> will get you into FICA estates. Is that FICA you, estates. F FICA estates. Okay, we all want to live in FICA estates. You need that good three, that excellent three-digit code. All right, wonderful. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to get into, I, I, I'm sure what a lot of people want to know, and, and we're going to get into like the, the meat and potatoes of the engagement today. And that is some, let's start by dispelling some of the common credit score myths. Mm -hmm. Myth number one. Myth number one, Ernest, is a pay raise or a better job will automatically raise my credit score. That is definitely a myth because when you look at your credit bureau report, there's no indication of what your salary is. So that has nothing to do with the, the decision that's made mm. from a credit standpoint because that information is not there. And that information on the credit report allows the lender to make an unbiased decision. Plus, the analogy that I like to use, if you have a $50,000 income a year or you have $150,000 income a year. If each individual pays their credit on time, if each individual makes decisions regarding their debt, debt load that's rational and, rational and, and reasonable, the impact will be the same. Everyone stays under 30% with the utilization. Everyone pays their debts on time. You're going to see similar scores in that instance. So it's not because of your um, income. It's because of your ability to exercise restraint and learn credit. Know how it works. Wonderful. Next. Now, before we go into myth number two, keep in mind, guys, we do have the chat going on. Uh, if there's anything that we touch on that y'all want us to touch on a little bit more in detail, as long as we have time, Go ahead and put that in the chat also, along with your questions. Like I said, we're going to have these compiled and we will address those uh, individually the much that we can at the end of the presentation. Okay, so we're going into mid number two now, Ms. Ane. What do you think about that? Okay, a good credit score must mean you are rich. Mm -hmm. That, again, is another myth. 
again, we will reiterate, a good credit score means that you understand credit. You understand the pie chart and the importance of paying your bills on time, staying under the 30% utilization and having a mixture of credit, all that we discussed in the beginning. So it's understanding credit. All right. Myth number three. Carrying a balance on my credit cards will help boost my score. It's not necessary. It may be necessary that you have a credit card, especially in the very beginning when you're establishing credit. And we're going to talk about how the credit union wants to help you in that area when you're establishing new credit. But you don't necessarily need to carry a balance. If you initially have a credit card that has a high interest rate because you're a new borrower and you don't have any existing credit, you can use the card, stay under the 30% and pay your balance in full before the billing cycle. So you've reaped the advantage of having a credit. You have a new trade line. You have a trade line. You've reaped the advantage of increasing your scores because you've exercised discipline and you've kept your balance at 30% or less. And you you just, you just totally did away with the disadvantage of the interest rate because you're not going to pay any interest. You're going to set that up on automatic transfer, pay that payment early before the billing cycle, and you're going to avoid the interest. Mm -hmm. So we, again, we will help you in that area. All we need to do is to sit you down, get you on the right path, and you don't need to carry a balance on those mm -hmm. credit cards. Myth number four. It looks like myth number four is going to cost you if you, if you actually take that uh, into consideration. <laughs> there is no need to worry about my score until I am older. We would like you to understand that here at the credit union, we like to start helping our members from the cradle onward. We will initially teach you and as a young person about relationships with the credit union because it's so very important to have a, a member, have a financial institution that you feel comfortable with. You can pick up the phone, you can call a representative, and you can talk about things that you need to take you through different stages in life, through buying a car and buying a home. We want you to start as early as possible with your relationship. You're all, already a member of our credit union family when that time comes and you need to become a borrower. So we're going to help you along each area uh, along the way and give you direction. But it's never too soon. If you're, I mean, if you have a credit card, if you need a credit card to start your credit, look at us for that secured credit card because that's going to help you so very much. But no, you don't want to wait till you get older. By the time you get older, you want to have some nice established credit history <laughs> that tells the tale of your ability to pay and your willingness to pay. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Number five. Student loans can't affect my credit score, and they most certainly can. A student loan reports to the credit bureau in the same way that any other creditor might report. So again, when you are applying for credit, that lender is going to look at how much student loan you debt you have, how much the payments are on that student loan debt and how you're paying them. So again, it triggers, it, it, it uh, affects the scores and it affects the decisioning on the loan Wonderful. just as well. Myth number six. Closing credit cards will help raise my credit score. Woo. If you leave with nothing else today, Please. recognize that that is the biggest myth. You can spend months building your credit with the secured credit card. We can switch you to a traditional one. You can do all that's necessary to, to increase that credit score. This one error will just totally obliterate all the work that you've done. That we don't want to have happen. So again, heed our direction here. Closing a credit card is not the thing. Exercise restraint, pay it all, leave it in place, exercise restraints and and reap the benefit of the higher credit score right. because of capacity we'll right. talk about capacity All right. mid number seven debt is actually good for your credit score that is not true debt is good if you can afford it 
Death is good when you exercise your restraint and you apply the thought patterns that we're supplying you with today. You want to make sure that the payment is affordable. If you need to borrow, you want to make sure that you pay your payments in a timely fashion, and you want to make sure that your utilization is sturdy. But the most important thing about debt, you don't want any more than you can afford. Recognize what your comfort level is with regards to debt loads and stay within that comfort level. Right. And, and that's a good segue into the next slide, right? Because it kind of, it depends on the type of debt that you're taking on, right? right. And right. That, what, that's what we call, call good debt, right? Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the next slide kind of talks about that. Go ahead. Yeah, good debt. And you can look at all three of these items. Each time in my life, when I've sat down to sign on the dotted line for any of these three, in any of these three areas, I had a warm and fuzzy feeling. <laughs> I felt like I was doing something good. Yeah. My first home, uh, 20, I was 20, 24 years old, and I was just overwhelmed because the rent in the apartment had gone from 350 to 385 a mm. month. That, to me, that was astonishing. That was such a big <laughs> hike. So I had an opportunity to assume an old VA loan because back then interest rates were so very, very high. Mm. So I had an opportunity to assume an old VA loan. My father-in-law actually signed, we had to come up with $20,000 to assume it. So my father-in-law, he had enough confidence in us. Wonderful. He signed for us to get our first home and I was totally elated. Good debt. It helped to increase our credit score and it bettered our position in life overall. Owning home ownership means wealth. Yeah. And that's what that, I mean, you, you, you just can't lose when you have home ownership. Auto loan, again, this is collateral for a loan, just as the home is collateral. So you're going to see lower interest rates. Mm. You have a, a vehicle, you're going to pay the loan down. Your vehicle has value. You have a lower interest rate. You've improved yourself when you purchase this item. So again, that is, uh, that is good debt. Wonderful. Student loans, I have absolutely no problem with because the only thing that's sure in this life is that things will constantly change. Every day there's changes, there's new things on the horizon. In order for you to stay abreast of these things, and education is paramount. You need to educate yourself in order to move forward in life. Mm -hmm. So student loan debt is not something that's terrible. It's not something that's awful. With student loan debt, you want to do the same thing that you would do with any other debt. Make good decisions. Mm -hmm. If you want to attain a degree, is it necessary that you go to a four-year university for day, from day one, or should you enroll in a two-year program, save some money, and then move on to a four-year? So learn how to look at the situation, arm yourself with information before you make these leaps in life, especially in areas where you're going to end up having to borrow money money. All of these factors here are good loans. You, you felt good when you signed for them and they enhanced your credit. Wonderful. So I think you said earlier that good debt, a good way of looking at it, 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 it builds you. Yes. So if it builds yes. you, yes. it's good debt. Exactly. All right. So now we're going to take a look at some examples of bad debt. And as I mentioned uh, to Ernest earlier, these can be seen as bad debts but you can also tweak them a little to make them work in you, to your advantage, especially that first one that says high interest loan, high interest rate credit cards. We mentioned when you first start to sign, uh, sign for a credit card or it's your very first line of credit, you will most probably here at the credit union have about an 18% rate, but we are going to counsel you. We're going to give you direction because you're part of our credit union family on how to have the advantage of a credit card without, with the, without having the disadvantage of the interest rate. And as we mentioned earlier, it's just to pay it, in, er, pay it early before the due date and, and utilize our um, I'll take advantage of our direction with regard to auto pays. Wonderful. So coming back to a myth again, myth number eight. Checking my credit score will lower it. That is entirely a myth. 
And as we mentioned, we don't want you to be afraid of credit scores or of looking at your credit scores. On the contrary, we want you to have that Experian app on your phone, and we want you to get used to looking at that application even throughout the day. If you're sitting on lunch and you just finished lunch a little bit early, pop up that app, look at the, um, the score that you have, look at the score simulator, just make that a part of your, um, your daily routine so that you can stay abreast. Because remember, we've talked about how much this three digit score impacts you. It can impact you when you're renting an apartment. We talked about impacting you with a job, purchasing an automobile or a home. For me, if there were anything that impacted my life on that level, I would want to check on it as often as possible. Feel free to do it if you have any questions about what you're seeing on the Experian app. Pick up the phone, call us, say, Ernest, I'm, a, I'm seeing something here that I question. We can help you. We're here to help you. So, again, check it as often as possible. Let Wonderful. that be your go-to. And, and we'll talk more about this later as well on, on some of the apps and things like exactly. that. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right. Examples of a soft credit inquiry. Soft as opposed to hard. So I've learned that a lot of members, a lot of our members are just that already savvy in this area. They come in and the, the first thing that they'll ask when we decide to add a second checking account or a third account, because we do that often to help them with budgeting. The first thing that they will have, will, will I need a, um, a, a hard pull on my credit report? Well, you're already a member. So no, we're not gonna do a soft pull. We're not gonna do a hard pull either. But to know that you as members are aware of, of that terminology, it really feels good because that means that you're in tune to uh, your credit report. But again, it, examples of soft credit pulls or checking your score. When you pull out that Experian app or you log into annualcreditreport.com, to check your credit that's not impacting your scores and is something you should do frequently. Auto insurance quotes, you'll see an inquiry on your credit report, again, soft. Employment verifications and background checks. So these are some examples of soft credit inquiries. Okay, so now we're gonna look at some examples of hard inquiries. Yes. The hard inquiries are car loan applications, credit card applications, mortgage applications, student loan applications. Now, Ernest is always so apt to point out what is the first indicator when you, that, to let you know that that's a hard pull. Right, right. They've asked you for your They've social. For your social, yes. right. Anything that you put your social on, there will be an inquiry done. So the question that you need to ask that individual or that entity is, will this be a hard pull or will this be a soft pull? Like we just said, a soft pull will not hurt you a hard pull will impact your credit score adversely. Mm -hmm. And even if that hard pull brings your score down a, li a little bit slightly, like for a car loan, do not worry about that mm -hmm. because now you have an opportunity to pay a car loan payment early on automatic transfer and you're gonna see that slight dip offset by increasing your credit score. All right, so another myth here, myth number nine. There is only one kind of credit score. There are multiple types of credit scores. And again, that Experian application, that Experian app exemplifies that. When you put the app on your phone and you click on credit score, you're gonna see your primary credit score at the top, but you'll see a number of different versions of credit scores. It'll say auto one, auto two, credit card, because there are some credit reports that are specific to different types of industries. The automobile industry, they may be primarily interested in how you've paid auto loans in the, in the past. So that's a different scoring system. But again, there are multiple versions and there are multiple um, credit score, right. credit score systems. Wonderful, wonderful. And we have myth number 10. It'll be our last myth, huh? Paying off bad debts or delinquent loans will erase them from my credit history forever. That will not happen. Um, on the contrary, if you have a, have a bad debt or a delinquent debt or a collection account and you don't address that, if you address it or you don't address it, it's still going to remain in there seven years. But I always ask um, our members to consider more than just what's in front of you. You see that delinquent debt. But if you put yourself in the position of a landlord or an employee or someone that's uh, entertaining, extending credit to you, if I'm looking at a credit report and I see that there was a delinquent debt that the person did not make any attempt to go back and pay, 
the, the flip side of that is the person who went back and say, I received services, I received merchandise, I want to go back and make good on this debt. It may say paid collection, but it still, it says something about you, that you took the time to go, because we can never tell when we're going to be in that position. Life happens to people. It may be that you have to be delinquent or slow pay on one of our credit union loans. We have found that our members, in most instances, will come back to us and say, you know what, this is what happened, but now I'm ready to pay. And of course, we're willing to work with them in those areas. So again, it won't go off, it won't be removed from the credit bureau report for seven years, unless it was a mistake that was made by an insurance company or a medical provider, they can take it off. But otherwise, it's going to remain there. We want to hear the story. And the story is, I went back and I paid, so I made arrangements to pay. All right, so we are going to jump into the next section, but just wanted to add something as well briefly, because um, we've had questions from individuals that are like, oh, so uh, what about these credit repair places and, and things of that nature? And, and my advice to, to an individual that's approached by someone in that regard is, is, is this. In the industry that we work in, if you walk in and you're a 30-something year old mm -hmm. and you've never had, and it shows that you haven't had any type of credit history because you went to one of these credit repair places and they somehow erased your whole credit history because it wasn't great history, right? Uh, that's a problem because if you, unless you're you know, new to this country or you're new to, 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 to credit, period, you should have some type of history. So you know, bad history is not always bad history because it shows history. You know, we, we're here to help individuals make better decisions going forward. Mm -hmm. um, it, 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 that's the best way to, to, to fix you know, the past per se, mm -hmm. right? Wouldn't you agree? I, I certainly do agree. And I always say that no credit is as bad as bad credit. And keep in mind, if you have a credit to, if you're 35 years old and then you have a, 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 a credit repair person that goes in and wipes out all your credit, it doesn't make sense. When we sit down and look at it or when an underwriter, someone sits down and look at it, that is the one thing that we're looking at. Does it make sense? Does it make sense for you at your station in life to have never had? any credit? Probably not. So again, there are ways to address these issues, and we, um, we hope that you have the confidence in us to come to us and ask us for the, for the help in that area. And, and, and I, I've been a bill collector before, um, and I will say, talk to your uh, uh, collectors. If you're receiving calls from collection agencies, it actually behooves you to talk to them. Find out, because a lot of times you can dispel those calls and stop getting them because, you know, it's it's, it's past the date that they can actually do anything to you. So when that phone rings and it's a collection agency or two, go ahead and talk to them. It's better that you know that way you can go ahead and address it than you just running away from it. Because running away from it won't, won't help you, okay? All right, so we're going on. How do I gain control of my credit score? Okay. Number one, prevent missed and or late payments by using automatic bank drafts. And again, we are reiterating what we said earlier. The early bird gets the worms. You want to set up multiple checking accounts, have a checking account that's specifically for all of those accounts that are on the credit bureau report. If the due date is on the 15th, set your automatic transfer up to um, have that payment made at the very beginning of the month. You know, you can tie it to the debit card. You can use your checking account information. You'll be able to earn points. You can, you can figure out ways where you, you are actually rewarding yourself for paying your credit uh, your accounts on time. And again, by far the most important reason that you want to um, pay your bills early is the 35% portion of the pie that you're satisfying that's going to increase your scores dramatically. But on a monetary base, do you want to pay late payments every month? Probably not. We don't want you to pay late payments, so we're going to give you some direction as to how to set up your accounts here at the credit union where you can make sure that you're all, always one step ahead. All right. Making gains number two. Check your credit report and correct any errors. Again, that Experian application and um, annual credit report, if you log in online, you will be able to see every entry on your credit bureau report, but you can also, if there's something that's incorrect, if it's not yours, you can submit disputes from the app very easily. 
this is your this is your your path your your um connection to the actual credit bureau where you can address those issues it's best to address them as early as you possibly can so that's why staying in tune to your credit report is very important and so it, yes correct and those in regards errors. to the apps credit karma or experian which one do you recommend I feel more comfortable with Experian. One reason is we're here at the credit union, we actually use the Experian Credit Bureau report and it has such a wealth of knowledge. It tells, you can look at it and tell uh, the, the, the mix of your credit, how much is revolving, how much is real estate, how much is installment. It um, gives you your credit score. If we tell you a signature loan here to consolidate your debts, We'll consolidate your credit cards, pay them all off. You leave a zero balance uh, relative to your, and have the credit line, have all of that availability. It's going to increase your score. Mm -hmm. Well, the simulator, the credit simulator will tell you it's a strong indicator of what that score will be after we help you through that consolidation process. All right. Making gains. Number three. Request credit limit increases on your credit cards. Mm -hmm. If you have a credit card that's already in place and you increase the credit line, that's increasing your capacity and capacity is king. That's what you, want. you increase that capacity, you in turn increase the score. Mm -hmm. If you had a $500 credit card and the balance is $250, that's a 50% usage you don't want your usage to be that high. Remember the 30%. How do you get that 30% that equity? You can apply at your financial institution for an increase in credit line and exercise restraint. It's there so that you can increase your capacity. It's not there for you to use it because you want to keep, you want to stay um, actually below that 30%. So, so again, you, and then two, you still have that history, that longevity. It's not a new credit card. You're still leaving that credit card in place that you opened three or four years ago. So you've got the history going for you. You have the 30% um, uh, utilization going for you and you're paying it in a timely fashion. So this is a win-win. Okay, so you're, and you're not saying get that increase during Christmas time because you want to get a little Jimmy or a little toy Rolls Royce, right? No, I no kidding. <laughs> All right. Consider a low interest rate personal loan or credit card to consolidate or pay off your debt. We encourage you, if you're going to apply for a personal loan, take a look in the market at what unsecured money, unsecured, and I don't want to use the, this verbiage without explaining it. So let me take a moment to explain to you what unsecured. Unsecured is no collateral. That unsecured loan versus a secured loan. Secured loan would be a home, a car, or something, uh, or a share secured where there's collateral, there's something that you've put up, and you're going to get lower interest rates in most cases. But I encourage you to look at what other financial institutions charge for personal loans. And I'm thinking that you'll be pretty surprised. Mm. So if you have, if you use the credit card and you had that wonderful 0% introductory rate, and as time, as, as time, would have it, you plan to pay it off in full before that interest rate went up. It just didn't work out that way. Mm -hmm. So now you have that balance at 29%. I would say that's the time you need to visit us here at the credit union and apply for one of our unsecured signature loans. Mm -hmm. uh, the best case scenario is 6.99, worst case scenario being 18%. But in any event, it's better than 29 to 36% at other financial institutions. Mm -hmm. right. Deferrals. I like to say that when you think about deferring a payment, especially with the CARES Act and in this current environment that we are, you have a choice of two Ds. You have a choice of a deferral or a delinquency. Deferrals are not bad. Go ahead and let's just take care of the, take the deferral utilize it because it's been granted to you. This is going to give you a chance to organize because you don't want the other D. You don't want a delinquency. That impacts your credit scores negatively. This deferral will not. Great. Don't close any accounts, particularly those you have had for a long time with, with, and those with zero balances. Woo. Remember my Sears account from college? That's 
this scenario. Mm -hmm. I never wanted to close that Sears account. It was an old account. And what I want, what I end, ended up doing, I kept the account. I used it. I paid it in a timely fashion. And that account from decades ago has been my claim to fame because it's helped me with my credit scores. Wonderful. Don't stop using credit but exercise restraint. Again, we've already explained that and you're going to be the first to exercise restraint with our direction. Okay. And this is, a, I'm sure, very important to a lot of people. Right it now. is. We want you to avoid ba declaring bankruptcy at every turn. If you need some, some help with organizing your debts, we're here to do that. But if you ultimately have to file bankruptcy, what we want you to keep in mind is once you file that bankruptcy, make sure that the debts that were not part of the bankruptcy are not labeled as bankruptcy and that the very moment you're able to purge that bankruptcy make sure that you do that to remove it from the credit report all right wonderful we have come to the end of our webinar today we want to thank you all so much for tuning in y'all have a wonderful afternoon bye-bye